Hello, this is a video about using the ratio test to test for convergence of infinite series. So first, what is the ratio test exactly? Well, we're going to let a sub n be a series with non-zero terms. The first component of the ratio test is that the series converges absolutely when the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is all less than 1. We say that the series diverges when the limit as n goes to infinity of the exact same ratio with an absolute value is greater than 1 or has a value of infinity. <laughs> the ratio test is, in fact, inconclusive when the limit value is equal to 1. Before we dive into using the ratio test, I want to talk to you a little bit about factorials. So by definition, if you see something like 4 factorial, it's not like saying 4, like you're excited. It's actually a mathematical operation. It means you take 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It's a decreasing product by one number less each time until you get all the way down to 1 which would mean 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so one way we can kind of write this a little bit differently is to just write the 5 separately by itself and notice what the sequence product here, the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is. That's actually 4 factorial. So we can write 5 factorial as 5 times 4 factorial. We can break off that first factor and write it separately. So in general, this means n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way until you get down to a value of 1. <clears throat> so which means that n plus 1 factorial would be n plus 1, take away 1, so times n, take away 1, times n minus 1, take away another 1, n minus 2, all the way until you get down to 1. Equivalently, we can write this as the first factor, n plus 1, and then group everything else together, that's actually what n factorial is. So we need this trick of sometimes writing out the first term, or the first factor, I should say, <clears throat> whenever we're using the ratio test. So let's use the ratio test to determine whether the following series converges or diverges. You have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n to the n over n factorial. <clears throat> Notice your a sub n is the exact formula n to the n over n factorial, while a sub n plus 1 is n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. I just replaced everywhere there was an n, I replaced it with n plus 1. So first, let's calculate the absolute value of the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So what happens here is I have my a sub n plus 1 written first, and then I'm dividing by a sub n. Remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's what I did here. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of a sub n n factorial over n to the n. Now the goal here is always to try and get some stuff to cancel out. So what I did first was I took my n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power. I broke it up into n plus 1 to the n and then n plus 1 to the first. It's kind of like using the properties of exponents in reverse. Think about what would happen if you were to recombine the n plus 1s here. You're multiplying, your bases are the same. You add n and you add 1 to get n plus 1. Similarly, I'm going to write the n plus 1 factorial as I did on the previous slide. n plus 1 factorial will become n plus 1, write the first factor separately, then n factorial. Then you have your n factorial over n to the n. At this point, I can finally cancel out. The n factorials cancel out. The n plus 1 on top with the n plus 1 on the bottom of the first fraction also cancels, leaving me with absolute value of n plus 1 to the n power over n to the n. Notice that for n equals 1 to infinity, you always have a positive quantity. And also notice that since both the top and bottom are raised to the n power, I can rewrite as n plus 1 over n to the n power. 
I will now take the limit as n goes to infinity of this ratio, giving me limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n to the n power. So I'm going to take this quantity and break it up over the denominator to get n over n plus 1 over n, all to the n power. So this gives me 1 plus 1 over n to the n power, which from L'Hopital's rule, or using L'Hopital's rule, this has a value of e which is greater than 1. Remember, e is 2.718. It's greater than 1. Therefore, we can conclude by the ratio test that the series diverges. <laughs> All right, in our in next example, we have the series n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n power, square root of n over n plus 1. <clears throat> so this is actually an alternating series. So notice that your a sub n is the exact series formula that they give you. And then a sub n plus 1 is negative 1 to the n plus 1 square root of n plus 1 over n plus 2. So first we'll calculate the ratio with an absolute value. <clears throat> All right, so what this means for us is we're taking the absolute value of negative 1's raised to powers. Well, when you take the absolute value of quantities with negative 1's in them, absolute value kills the negativity. So I'm going to exclude those negative 1 to the powers as I write this ratio out. There's no need to throw it in there. It's extra absolute value kills those negative 1's raised to powers. So I have square root of n plus 1 over n plus 2. I'm dividing by a sub n, so I'm multiplying by its reciprocal. So this gives me n plus 1 over square root of n. Now there's not much you can do to simplify this, but you do get, for n equals 1 to infinity, you always have a positive value for every single grouping, so there's no need to include absolute value. So I'm going to write the square root groupings all in the same fraction together, and then the non-square root groupings in another fraction together. And this gives me square root of n plus 1 over n, and then n plus 1 over n plus 2 power. We now have to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this quantity. Right, so I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this ratio that I found. You have square root of n plus 1 over n, and then you have your n plus 1 over 2. <clears throat> so remember, when you're taking infinite limits, I want to go under the square root, pick the highest power term from the top, the highest power from the bottom, that gives me square root of n over n. Second grouping, highest power term from the top is n, highest power term on the bottom is also n, giving me n over n. This can be nicely simplified the square root of 1 times 1, which has a value of 1. So limit as n goes to infinity of 1 is indeed 1. <clears throat> this means the ratio test is actually inconclusive. A value of 1 means the ratio test is inconclusive. We can't say anything about the convergence or divergence of this series currently. As a matter of fact, this is actually an alternating series. The alternating series test would tell you if the series converges or diverges. So thanks for watching.